Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the campus of Tabor College for tonight's KCAC action as uh, your Tabor College Blue Jays women will be hosting the Ottawa Braves. As always, I'm joined with Rod Ham. I'm Jim Paulus. Good evening, Rod. Good evening, Jim. Hello, everybody. It's great to be inside where it's warm and toasty as opposed to outside, which was relatively warm speaking, <laughs> yes, <laughs> comparatively speaking to what we've had the last few days. So we have an interesting uh, matchup tonight as the Blue Jays will take on Ottawa for the, the only time this year with the new scheduling. Ottawa comes in 5-5, five and five, uh, but as we were looking over their stats and their um, the different uh, results, they're a, a dangerous team to definitely uh, face right now. That's absolutely right. Last week when we were doing the, the Tabor broadcast, Ottawa took uh, conference leading University of St. Mary to the wire, only losing by two points in the end. And then they turned around and uh, I think they barely squeaked by uh, Southwestern, who's bottom, who's at the bottom of yeah. the, the league. So, yeah, so uh, I guess it's a little bit like uh, Forrest Gump tonight. It's like a box of chocolates. We are not sure what yeah. we're going to get here. And the Blue Jays coming off their first conference loss on Saturday. They dropped one at Bethany, and they are sitting by alone, second place. So you can see they're nine and one in conference, twelve and four overall. And you watched some of that second half. What were some of the things that you saw there? Well, what I saw was uh, a Bethany team that was obviously pumped up. Of course, you know, anytime you can knock off uh, one of the top teams in the league, you're, you know, uh, Tabor's got a target on their back going into Bethany, and I thought Bethany. Uh, Probably just they they just out hustled us a little bit and, and some of that, but it, other other than that, it just felt like Tabor couldn't get a, a real flow. I had chances uh, in the fourth quarter to take the lead, had some wide open uh, three point looks, and they just didn't fall for us. It could be that one side of Jim over there at, oh, yeah. at Bethany. There's only uh, bleachers on one side. Maybe that throws off your equilibrium uh, equilibrium a little bit. I don't know. It, well, it was just uh, disappointing. The Blue Jays just couldn't get it. I think if they'd have got that over the hump and taken the lead, they'd have won the game, but they just couldn't do it. Yeah. So the Blue Jays need to focus, of course, tonight. And try not to look ahead. Big matchup on Saturday, which we'll refer to later on. Yeah, let's get into those starting lineups. And for the visiting Ottawa Braves, they'll start out with leading scorer, I believe, if I looked at the stats right, and that would be number five guard, Kennedy Banquet. She's averaging 10. Well, where'd it go? I'm, I'm losing my mind here. I think it's 13.6 points a game for the Braves. She's uh, trying to think. Looking, I got the rosters are all different tonight than what I'm used to. So it is 13.6 points a game and then after that number 13 Nayeli Acosta also a guard Nicole Schnell also a guard for the Ottawa Braves number 14 and then number 22 Desiree Marshall Penny also a guard and rounding out the lineup for the Braves number 32 Sydney Scott a forward and so Ottawa goes small with four guards and one forward Compared to Tabor College, you see the starting lineup. Janisha Hendricks wearing number zero. Tegan Worth, number two. Local girl from Hillsborough, Kansas. Cassidy Beam, another guard. So three guard lineup for the Blue Jays. She wears number three from McPherson, Kansas. Maddie McCoy from Ottawa, I believe. Oh, yeah. Or nearby Ottawa. I think Ottawa, she's a guard forward, a tough matchup for uh, opposing teams and then rounding out the lineup number 43 Olivia Owens from Hutchinson and she plays inside time, almost strictly we will step aside here for just a little bit for the opening prayer and the national anthem we'd ask that you please remain 
Yes. Many of you know that the Iton Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Iton Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itonagency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're All right, you can see here we uh, are really proud of the production that our uh, many students do and also other staff members that help out and to try to give you the best possible uh, presentation of this basketball game. I know sometimes it's hard to get around conf the conference these games, so hopefully you'll enjoy this and we're really thankful for their help to make this happen. Yeah, we've got about every camera view you'd want, uh, yeah. unless uh, maybe your ESPN. We're not quite ESPN, but yeah. we're getting close. Well, the announcers, I mean. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of that, I'm watching ESPN last night, watching uh, some Big 12 basketball, and Jay Williams, former Duke player, took one of my lines away from me during the – I mean, he didn't know it was my line, but he, <laughs> took, he took it away from me, uh, and I'll, we'll, we can talk about that later. But uh, let's, let's let's talk about the game at hand here. Ottawa will be wearing all black tonight, as the Blue Jays will be wearing all white. Yeah, one thing I noticed is um, they have uh, really good shooters across the uh, their starting lineup, and uh, they, as a team, shoot 35% from the three. That's something the Blue Jay defense prides themselves in. So that'll be an interesting matchup. But they have. What I'm seeing here, a couple people over 40% and a couple others that are in the high 30s. And so I think that's something to watch tonight is how effective they're going to be able to shoot the three against Tabor's defense. And Tabor is more of a uh, slow down, uh, walk the ball up the court type of team. And Ottawa, I'm going to guess, is more fast paced because they average 75.6 points per game and also 37.9 rebounds a game, which means both teams are putting the chucking the ball up quite a bit in that yep. case so also 13 assists a game which is a lot so that also indicates good ball movement that indicates that they uh, they get the ball up and down the court pretty quickly Kennedy Banquette leads OU in scoring at 13.6 she's also shooting 54 54 percent from the floor and coming off a 26 point game against Southwestern she also leads the team in rebounding so that's pretty interesting that, uh, and I'm going to guess uh, Te Tegan Worth is going to be guarding yep. her. Yep. <laughs> it's a defensive stopper for the Blue Jays. I believe, if I look, if I remember right, Ottawa 
took Tabor College women to overtime last year in their last meeting, and then Tabor proceeded to outscore them 12-0 in the overtime. You know, thanks to the uh, Ottawa Sports Information, they have a nice packet here. Blue Jays have 10 straight wins against the Braves, and uh, they made note that uh, Ottawa has not won at this building since 2012. So that's quite a stretch. Yeah, well, so. well, let's just hope, let's keep let's the, just hope that just, didn't jinx them. Yeah. <laughs> Ottawa's out on the floor, ready to go. Here come the Blue Jays. And Olivia Owens will be at the tip. Once again, Owens, McCoy, Worth, Beam, and Hendricks. And the Braves will take the tip there. Number 22, Marshall Penny will bring it up, picked up by Hendricks. They get into their offense. Tabor in their traditional man-to-man. -man. Ottawa's looking inside right away. The ball's off of Hendricks. Ottawa will inbound under their basket. 16 on the shot clock. Good help side defense down there by Janisha. Inbounds to Scott. Oh, nice tip, and that uh, picked off. Maddie McCoy with the tip and beam. Oh, my goodness. A run out by yeah. the Blue Jays for their first bucket of the game. What were you saying about walking it up? And <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So much for walking the ball up the court. Great look by Tabor up court. I think was that, uh, was that Hendricks that found Beam streaking up the middle of the court. Good, to, good to see Beam get on the board early. In and out. You got a wide open three for Ottawa. No good. Madam McCoy, who leads the Blue Jays with rebounds, grabs that. Hendricks and, brings it up quickly. And Hendricks did bring it up quickly. And Singh that Ottawa got back quickly. She slowed it down, got Tabor into their offense. Let's see what the Blue Jays do here. Worth gets it over to Beam. She's going to shoot an open three, and that's off. Almost an offensive board, but that's picked up by Scott. Long, really long rebound there. We probably haven't noticed this. It's just uh, people at home maybe haven't picked up on it either. There is an extra three-point arc on the floor tonight. That's not, I don't think it's normally there, is it? The white, no. the white three-point arc is there for the Trojan Classic, which starts tomorrow night. It's a high school classic. They use the Tabor Gym, so you see that painted on the floor. Hendricks drives, has to kick out to Worth. Beam over to Owens. Boy, she's been on a roll the last yeah. couple games. She's up to now over 10 points per game. Nothing fancy about that. Just drove to the bucket, went up over Scott. Nice take by number five, Bankett. Same, same on the way, other side of the court. I don't know if it's she's like Tony Dorsett or Tony Dorsett. Is it Bankett or Bankett? Oof. I'm, con I'm confused by that. I'll have to get a, a call from the Ottawa. Ottawa coaching staff. McCoy with the long two, and that's good. Blue Jays up 6-2. So you saw that last move by, by Banquet, or Banquet, and that went all the way to the hole, and there's another one just off the mark. Two good drives by the Braves, last two possessions. Alatini with that drive, just couldn't get it to fall, and now a three-pointer by Owens. Oh, whoa! Three-pointer wow. was was just, that was stroked. That yeah, was, was all money. That hardly even hit the net. That was, which we did get a new net on this side, by the way, that's yeah. from the last game. That's good. I'm pretty sure you made that happen. Yeah, thank it. But guarded by Worth. Big battle down low. Acosta getting it inside to Scott, and Hendricks comes over and commits what I would call a good foul. They were both a little late. Owens was trying to front. The front got there late, and then Janisha got there late for the uh, for the help side. So Scott from Augusta, Kansas, will go to the line and to shoot two. This is just her third start of the year. 
First one's no good. Not a lot of free throws to uh, really judge how well she shoots. 63% from the field, but only five on eight, only eight attempts. A couple Blue Jays checked in, Maya McGee and Chloe Bowen. Three at second free throw, good. Nine three Tabor. McGee gets some instructions from Coach Reed and she brings it up. Over to Bean. Oh, got McCoy. Let's see what she does with this. Dribbles it out. Like we've said earlier, uh, McCoy going on oh. the, against this team here. Oh, oh, my goodness. Good try there by Chloe Bowen. Just rolled off the rim. But McCoy presents a matchup nightmare, nightmare with McGee skying for the rebound because Ottawa runs a four guard setup. Four guards on. We get a late call. I'm not sure what 22 is going to get. 22, that's Marshall Penny going to get called for the foul. Just the first team foul for the Braves. But McCoy has a, a definite height advantage against Alatini as Lily Veer checks in for the Blue Jays. Zone well, defense there. Now by the Braves. Oh, had Veer open down low, turned it down. Now they go to Veer. Veer pops a little short one, rolls off the rim. Banquet with the rebound, and we get a timeout, Ottawa. Coach Bondurant will take his first timeout, and uh, is it a. It's like a 30. It's a 30, so we'll just stay okay. right here. So they're five and five in the conference, had some really good showings throughout the year. This is a team I would not want to play come tournament time. Um, Cause like they've had some really good, like I said, the St. Mary's game last week and first year coach looks like they are heading in the right direction. Yeah, like you said, Bondurant, a first year coach. He was the assistant there, I believe, and has also coached on the men's side as an assistant, so. He's not he's first year coach, but he's not a he's not fresh out of yeah. out of the high school ranks. All right, 536, 536 left in this first quarter. Blue Jays still up 9-3. Braves get into their offense. Oh. Nice little floater. I think that was Acosta that scored that, number 13 for the Braves. Now pressure being put on. Marshall Penny and oh, another man. layup that goes off the rim for the Blue Jays. Marshall Penny off the banquet. Banquet looking low for Scott. Now back out. Alatini off to oh, a little lob pass there. We got a double team. We're going to get out of that double. Yeah, someone was open. Shot clock under at 10. We got to have a travel there. Chloe yeah. oh. Bowen does something that you normally don't see her do, and she left her feet and got lucky that uh, yes. she got lucky that uh, yeah, Ottawa Brave fell down. But if she doesn't fall down, it's probably a foul. Yeah. Two new players in the lineup. Number 11 for the Braves, Haley Henry out of Houston, Texas. Checks in along with number two, Jayla Johnson from Aurora, Colorado. Tabor having trouble running their offense. Can't get the screen set. Oh, man. Shot clock down to seven. Yeah. We're going to get a hands call on... I think that's Alatini. Boy, with two seconds on the shot clock. For the Blue Jays, Alicia Baker from Purcell, Oklahoma, and Brooke Berlin out of Clearwater, Kansas. A whole new lineup in for the Blue Jays now. We'll see how the Blue Jays do with this lineup on the defensive end. Beers fakes, drives. Kicks it out to McGee. And the Blue Jays just have not got anything going on the offensive end as Baker sets up for a three, and that's long. Yeah, they have not figured out that zone. 
Oh, Marshall yeah. Penny is now yeah. is going to get called for an illegal pick, which is a point of emphasis yeah. this year. That was a strong pick. Yeah. <laughs> And Olivia Owens checks back checks in for, for the Blue Jays along with number 14, number 14 for the Braves, Nicole Schnell out of Blue Springs, Missouri. Blue Jays stuck on nine for a bit here, still up 9-5. Man-to-man defense by the Braves. As Hendricks trying to get into the offense and Marshall Penny just not letting her. Now Brooke Berlin gets it down low to Owens. Owens turns and goes up. It's going to be a jump ball called, and it'll stay with the Blue Jays. Jump ball. Possession. Blue Jays. So ten, the shot clock won't reset on that. Ten seconds. Baker to th inbound for the Blue Jays. Ooh. Finds Hendricks. Now back to Baker. Baker looks down low to Owens. Kicks out to Veer. Veer for three. That's off the mark, and Schnell will let that thing right out of bounds. Out of bounds. It's so, been about three or four minutes since we a bucket for the Blue Jays. It's been a while. 9-5 mm -hmm. Blue Jays. Fortunately, they are very solid on defense. Marshall Penny off to Banquet. Banquet driving. She's left-handed. Cut off by Veer. Nice now Berlin defense. helps. Good job by the Tabor defense. Baker now working hard against Johnson. Now Marshall Penny. She drives, can't get it to go. Now the shot clock running down. Shot thrown up and blocked partially. Nice job on defense. Owens pushing Ooh. it. Oh, man, she's going right back to Owens. Yeah, she oh, had her. She has a great matchup down there. Berlin from 15, can't get it to fall. Oh. Marshall Penny comes out of the pack with it. It's going to go coast to coast with a layup. 9-7 Blue Jays. As you're right, it's been uh, it's been a few minutes since the Blue Jays got anything going on offense. And except for a couple wide open threes, not a lot of great shots either. Except, except that one. <laughs> well, I think Owens was a little bit upset that she didn't get the ball down low last possession, and so this time she was going to make sure she got her shot. I think Good move. I think the way that they're playing us, that uh, Owen should be option one every time down. Absolutely. Kind of a wild shot picked up by Baker. She'll push it up. It would have been a nice uh, alley-oop for a seven-foot center going in. Oh. And Owens again. Uh, and Owens putting the Tabor College women on her shoulders right now. Nine of the 13 points from Owens. Banquette guarded by Veer. Now over to Johnson. Johnson nowhere to go. Bank wow. shot off the glass, off the rim, bounces out. Kind of a floater of the bank shot. You don't see those very often. And we're going to get a foul call this time on Berlin. I think she just got in the I don't know if it was on a legal screen. I think she just got in the way and, and yeah. couldn't get out of the way. Yeah, I don't think she was trying to set a screen. But I don't either. Bad spot. So yeah. Tegan Wirtz checks back in. 109 left here in this quarter. Checking in for all number 30, Tiani Rollins. Also in for all number 32, Sydney Scott. Braves get into their set here. Tiana Rollins oh. checks in for the Braves. Man, Scott. Scott got a little bit of a push up, but got in there and got that bucket. Blue Jays up by four. Rollins guarding Hendricks, so Ottawa Braves are a deep team. They've put a lot of players on the court already in this contest. Boy, As Owens wants that ball. She's going to back up and shoot that shot oh, again. Oh, and she, on she is fire. on fire tonight. And I, this could be a combination of just – being downright ticked off about losing to Bethany. <laughs> yeah. Well, she the last three or four games, she's led us, I think, just about every one of those games scoring. And so she's been on a roll. 
if we'd have won in Bethany, she might have been player of the week just with her scoring. Yeah. All right, about a four-second differential. Oh, smallest player on. Oh, man. Got to block her out as she was able to get in there and get that rebound. Fouls on the Blue Jays, number 30, Brooke Berlin. That's her second. Team's Berlin's first. second foul. Second She'll have to come out of the contest. So seven seconds on the game clock here. Got a couple free throws. First free throw is good. Second, 15-11. Yeah. Both those free throws look really good. I was hoping we'd keep them to single digits. Tabor pushing it up court. Baker for three, and yeah. it goes at the buzzer. Alicia Baker with a three-pointer at the buzzer puts Tabor up 18 to 11. Wide open off a of free throw. Seven seconds. That was yeah. great. We'll watch you it here. See the replay again, but looked One. like Ottawa was uh, busy guarding the bucket and forgot about the three-point shooter. We'll be right back. estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Iton Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Iton Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itonagency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage. Which is Owens, Hendricks, McCoy, Worth, and Beam. And somebody jumped into the lineup here real quick for Ottawa. Number 11, Haley Henry, came right back in and... Not sure who, who went out. Oh, nice drive by Hendricks. Beautiful. I don't know how she got that up. Yeah, I thought she was going to run into the, a wall there, but she was able to sneak through to the, the rim and lay it off the backboard. Blue Jays hit that 20. Just a little late for you, but we'll take yeah. it. Yeah. Just, just a 30 seconds late, but it'll it's okay. Banquette spins, goes up, and mm. scores. No help on the spin in the lane. And she's going to go left, as we've seen so she far. She is a lefty, no doubt about it. Hendricks to McCoy. See if they get it into that hot hand. Ottawa's defense. Owen. And it does go to the hot hand, and Owen's just off the mark that time. Looked like she had Scott on her hip, or she could have taken her one way or the other, but just didn't force the issue that time. 
Yeah, Bankett goes to the right and <laughs> can't get it to fall with her right hand. Worth brings it up off to McCoy. Now Hendricks, and she's going to drive, get fouled. Yeah. Otherwise, she has a dead bang layup. And, of course, uh, Bankett's telling her teammates, give me some help. I'm yeah. laying on the floor down here on the other end. And Well, she was uh, talking to the rest as she was coming back, upset about not getting her own call. Uh, and uh, so she may not have been as prompt down there to cover her. So Hendricks, first one's good. Acosta checks back into the game for the Braves, replacing Johnson. Hendricks is wise enough to take advantage of that, uh, knowing her, knowing that they were shorthanded. Four straight points by Hendricks. 22-14. Marshall Penny to Scott. Scott's going to dribble over. Acosta has it. Now back to Marshall Penny. Oh. Good help. Oh, man. Uh, Unfortunate. Hendricks had it in her hands and lost it. Looked like one of the Chiefs wide receivers. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Chiefs. <laughs> Hendricks going back and forth, top of the key, oh, off to Bean. Now Worth. Owens tossed to the ground by Scott. Ball goes back to Owens. She'll stop and pop, miss it, but Worth gets the rebound. McCoy wide open three, and it's oh. off. And Beam fighting for it. Can't get to it. It'll be... White ball as now Beam was able to knock it off of Marshall Penny, I think. I don't think we get a – should have – well, we hit the rim on the shot. Should go to 20. Well, it already went to 20 and came back to 15 maybe. Zone defense on the inbounds, and Hendricks lines oh. up a three and nails it. They caught it as a two. Oh. Just inside. 24-16 Blue Jays. Marshall Penny with the ball. Pass to the high post, Scott. Oh, that one's knocked away by Owens, and Worth is going to go in for an easy layup. Scott chasing her down, couldn't get to her. Ten point lead now for the Blue Jays. Wasn't that Owens that tipped the ball? Away I think there? so, yeah. yeah. And she was watching her and got her hand in there and just nudged it enough, and then Worth picked it up. Now some help, that time on Banquette. Good job by Owens. What is it that Olivia Owens isn't doing out there tonight? <laughs> My goodness, yep. we got a three-second call maybe down in there. Oh, uh, nice. Owens. <laughs> yeah. With the steal. Yeah. Another drive oh. inside. Hendricks couldn't get that one over the rim. Now she steals the ball, and I think it almost went out of bounds. That could have been called either way, actually. So big shift change here for the Blue Jays. Looks like Beam staying in and everyone else is new. Veer, McGee, um, Jordan. Jordan Lowry checking yeah. in for the first time tonight. Oh, that's right, with uh, Brooke Berlin with two fouls. Yeah. Number 13, Lowry from Oakley, Kansas. Getting some PT. Banquet now driving on Veer, goes up and scores oh. right over the top. Just a little late there on the help. Lead back down to eight, 26-18. Man-to-man -man defense now for the Braves. Goes down to Bowen. Bowen turns, loses the ball, and then somehow a travel was called. I'm not sure how you got a travel out of that. The ball left her hand. And she just grabbed it. And then she grabbed it back. I didn't see the travel. Well, I think it was being yelled over here by the... Yeah, I think so, too. I think that was a uh, bench call. Oh, nice rebound by Veer. She'll push it up. McGee gets a handoff from Veer. McGee going to go all the way in, and she's oh. going to pick up the foul. I think that'll be Johnson. I wonder if Coach Reed said something after the first quarter about some of this pressure about the guards just taking it in. They've done that several times this second quarter. Well, it's one of the uh, one of the calls that uh, guards and, and coaches will tell their guards to use that call. 
a lot of times if if they're pressuring that wing so much you can't make that first pass to the wing a lot of a lot of teams will start with a pass to the wing or a dribble to the wing you're able to just either raise a fist or call a clear where that guard can just vacate and you can just go to the hole have all that and space yeah, yeah it's a very good very good ploy by coach reed or mcgee whoever is doing it one of two lead back up to nine Lowry going to get called for the foul, and the shot is good by Alatini. We'll see it again here. I don't exactly know where the foul. There wasn't uh, the only contact was with Alatini when she kind of stumbled after hitting the floor. I didn't see a lot of contact otherwise, but once again, the officials have the whistle, and uh, we go with what they call 27-21. Blue Jays still on top by six. Five and a half minutes to play in this second quarter. Beam gets it over to McGee. See what the some confusion here for the Blue Jays. Now we're going to get a oh. illegal screen by Bowen. Foul on the Lady Blue Jays, number three, Jesse McGee. Coach Reed not happy. That's her. Putting the, putting the onus on the point guard here for, for whatever happened there. Course, cross court pass. Banquet driving on Veer. Good job by freshman Veer on defense on Ottawa's leading score. Now all the way in, Alatini. Yeah. Now we're going to get a foul on Scott. Scott had the rebound, and and uh, Lauer just came and took it away from her, and then Scott just reached over the top of her and got a foul. I mean, yeah, uh, it's a coach's nightmare when you pick up a foul 90 feet from the basket. Both teams with three team fouls. Beam had a three, turned it down. Now gets it to Bowen. Bowen too far away from the block. Cross court to McGee. She'll set a screen. Now McGee, you go in yeah. for the basket, and she's fouled, but the call is on the floor before the shot. Fouls on Ottawa's number two, Jalen. You'll see that foul coming that's right there. Yeah, that's, that's the right call. Not in the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> I really think our guards need to keep doing that, taking it to the hole. Lowry has it at the elbow, kicks oh. it back to Beam, now to McGee, now to Veer. Veer drives, kicks it out to Lowry. Cross court to Beam, three-pointer, and it's off. A little bit long. Oh. McGee trying to tip the ball to Lowry, and neither one could get a handle on it. Blue Jays with a little bit of a drought again. Oh, nice tip by Bowen. Beam collects that, and Blue Jays with a forced another turnover. Beam kicks it to Lowry. Now over to Veer on the wing. Now we're going to get a jump ball. Rollins reaching in, and it'll stay with the Blue Jays as Owens and Baker check back into the game for Tabor. All is well. Owens is back in. That's right. And Acosta. And Henry and Acosta. Marshall Penny. I don't know who all checked in, but that's who's on the court right now. Owens with 11 points and four rebounds. Oh, nice steal. Lowry got it stripped, and now we're going to have a jump ball or a timeout. I think we got a timeout. Timeout, Ottawa. It's a 30-second timeout. 27-21, only a six-point lead by the Blue Jays. Can't remember what their largest lead was. It was about eight to was ten. They ten did, or yeah, just briefly had a ten point. Blue Jays shooting forty seven percent. Ottawa forty four. That has gone up considerably. One of the things that uh, I saw in the uh, Bethany game is Blue Jays had twenty turnovers. So we're almost at halftime. Blue Jays only at four. So that's a nice uh, change big from Saturday. Big improvement. Again, Blue Jays led by uh, Olivia Owens with eleven points. Denisa Hendricks with seven for the Braves. Banquet with six and Scott with six. For the Blue Jays, 
Baker, McGee, Veer, Owens, and is it Lowry? Lowry. All right. Marshall Penny, Banquet. Uh, nice fight through by Veer again. Henry, Acosta, and 20, Alatini. Yes. Good. They've caught that three seconds. Now McCoy and Hendricks check into the game, replacing Lowry and McGee. Boy, I really like this lineup here. Uh, a little bit of pressure. Let's see what. Uh, oh. Got away. Oh. Got yeah. out of it. And they had Owens, but. Uh, Veer fakes the three, drives, kicks it out to Baker. Baker over to McCoy. Well, I give it to Owens. Now Owens gets it down low, and she's going to oh, get charged. Uh, man. Called for the charge as mm. Alatini mm. went went down fairly easily. Saw that and, coming. Uh, she, but she played it right. She did, she yep. Did, she did the right thing. And you'll see that that's the right call. First foul on Owens. 2.50 left here in this first half. Both teams stuck on these numbers here for a bit, 27-21. Henry with it, driving on Owens. Goes all the way through. Passes out for a three-pointer mm. by Alatini, and it's good. Just like that, the lead's down to three. 27-24 Blue Jays. Blue Jays need a good look. You can't even get the first pass. A little... Pressure there. Oh, nice. Owens Owens made that happen. Came out with some high post. Came out as her uh, inside post position. And that's another ploy that you use against pressure. You use some high post release for pressure release. We'll give Just a go. beautiful pass back to Hendricks for the layup. Good defense there. McCoy gets the rebound. Kicks it. Off, <laughs> off her knee, knees, knees it to yeah. Hendricks. Fortunately, Hendricks was there. Now Baker will line up for a three-pointer, and that one a little long. long. Banquet coming up, kicks it out to Alatini for another three, and it's oh, good. Man, back to back. So Alatini heating up for the Braves. And that's their first couple threes of the night. That was a number we needed to keep an eye on. Two-point lead for the Blue Jays heading into the last minute of play here in this first half. Shot clock at 10. Owens has it. Nice pass. To, oh, my goodness. How did she get that up there? I don't know. Nice assist there by Owens to Baker. I don't know if that was a design play or if it was just freelance. Just happened. Henry driving on Owens, kicks it out to Banquet. Banquet's going to drive. And she oh. goes off the glass and scores. Wanting the foul as well. Didn't get it. It's about the third time she's wanted a foul on, a, on those uh, layups. And she, she might have a legitimate point on a couple of them. Ten-second differential here. Nice right, pass right. inside to Hendricks, running running a little two-man game there. Hendricks to Owens, and Owens has 13 now. See if Blue Jays can get a stop. 33-29, six seconds here. Owens going to take it all the way, and she's going to oh. try to shoot it. Doesn't matter. Time runs out as the Blue Jays... Have a slim four-point lead here to go into the second half. We will take about a 10, 15-minute break. We'll be back for the second half. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. 
Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at HillsboroFordKS.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. 
Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service, always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Iton Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Iton Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itonagency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Iton Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Iton Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itonagency.com. 
Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or bodybuild, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference.
Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to powerlift or bodybuild, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your Starting lineups, it looks like in for both teams as Acosta drives on beam. She cuts her off. Now Marshall Penny to Alatini. Alatini drives on Owens, and she's going to go up and get the layup. Owens avoiding the foul, but that's a two-point lead now for the Blue Jays. Boy, Braves really responded after that first quarter. Played really well that second quarter. Beam has it on the wing. McCoy top of the key off to Worth. Owens at the elbow. Now Beam lines up for a three-pointer. That's off, and it'll scoot out of bounds. Blue Jays end up shooting just over 50% from the field, but Ottawa 52%. Uh, that's the one that surprises me the most, is the Blue Jays' defense just not up to their normal par. Played, seemed like they played good defense, but Ottawa taking advantage of the shots they got. McCoy reaches in. Now Scott gets the ball inside over McCoy. And Scott's a handful down low as McCoy picks up her second foul. You can watch. Yep. Beam, McCoy, Hendricks, Owens, and Worth for the Blue Jays as Scott drives in on Owens. Now goes off the glass. No good. Too strong. Good defense by Owens. Oh, no, but no one picked up McCoy. She got a little bit deep under the basket. Wide open, though. She'll shoot two. For the Braves, Acosta, Alatini, Marshall, Penny, Scott, and Banquette. First free throw is good. Ottawa Braves don't look like a five and five team to me. No. Yeah, well, we said that in the outset. This is a dangerous team. Not many people want to play this team in conference. Oh, totally left. Kind of a some breakdown on yeah. defense there. Now the lead is down to one. Blue Jays have led throughout, but now they're down just a one point lead after having it as high as ten early in that second quarter. McCoy for three. It's good. So McCoy with a three-point answer, and Coach Reed has seen something that he wants to get fixed here on defense, and he'll call a timeout, talk it over for 30 seconds. I know we've talked a bunch about Olivia Owens, but this is her stat line from the first half. 13 points, four rebounds, two assists, and three steals. So we'll take a second half like that. So. Keep, keep that going. See if we can keep that going for the second half. Or we get a few other players to step up, like Maddie McCoy right there with that three-pointer. She's got six points on the night. And that shot that she took there, I think that's some of what Coach Reed has talked about, wanting her to shoot more. She came off that screen thinking to shoot, and uh, you can see that, you know, we know that she can shoot it well from, from three, and so like to see her keep doing that. Maddie McCoy, 44% behind the arc this What's year. What's that uh, put her in the in the nation, I wonder? I, yeah, I can't remember. But uh, Marshall Penny now brings it up after the timeout. Let's see what kind of defensive adjustment. Oh, jeez. And Owens was looking behind her, and the pass came right into Scott. So right away... Braves get back on the board, pull within two again. I'm guessing that timeout was not what Coach Reed had hoped <laughs> would come out of that. Well, Owens just happened to be caught off guard there a little bit, and oh. this time she just short irons it a little bit. Rebound to the Braves as Banquette brings it up. 
Finkett trying to go all the way to the bucket, and she's fouled at the end, and Hendricks doing a good job on defense on Banquette. Picks up the foul. It's her second foul. As Banquette will go to the line to see if she can tie this game up. First one is no good. Second one is good. She's 93% this over the years. So Blue Jays still narrowly holding on to that lead. One point lead for the Blue Jays as Hendricks brings the ball up. Gets a screen from McCoy and she's going to go all the way in. Ball blocked from behind by Alatini as Banquette brings it up quickly for the Braves. Shut off there by Beam. And they were trying to take advantage of a mismatch, although I would say McCoy's not a mismatch, but uh, Blue Jays with the steal. Boy, Owens really wanted that again. Let's see if we can get it to her. Oh. Jump ball, and that'll stay with the Blue Jays. Substitutions in for the Blue Jays. McGee uh. and Bowen for Owens and Hendricks. We have a problem. Number 11, <laughs> Checking in for the Blue Jays, number 31. And we've got to get a, another ball here to try to get that thing out. Oh. Just keeps getting stuck up there even further. So uh. Beam doing a good job of sticking that ball in the crotch. And yeah. it goes in. Does that I think, count? I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think it should too. Jump ball. Is All right. Shot clock's at 17. Ball finally passed into Beam in the corner. Beam looking. Still has her dribble. Gets it to Bowen. Oh. Bowen cross court to Worth. Now McCoy has it for a little shot there from about 12 feet and scores. So I think it's uh, McCoy is going to be the one to step up here in the second half. And I think so. She's come out with some purpose. Let's see if we can get some better defense here on this side of the, the floor. Bowen will be guarding Scott down low. It's a four out one in offense and that sometimes is tough to defend. Banquet drives, kicks out to Rollins. Rollins goes all the way in and misses. Rebound Scott now fighting for it and the Braves cannot come up with it. The scary part is is they almost got their off an offensive it's board there. And kind of a wild shot in the lane but it Came to, kind of came off weird, and uh, they almost gathered that. Six minutes left here in the third quarter. See if Blue Jays can stretch this out. And we're going to get a foul called on Rollins, who wanted who wanted a jump ball. That'll send McGee to the line to shoot two as Lily Veer checks in for Worth. I was not sure what that call was going to be. I think everyone was kind of waiting around. Was it going to be a jump or no out of bounds? Or? Well, it was a little late and it was a little lethargic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll take it. There we go. That ball finally got flushed after rolling around the rim. Oh, in and out. That one just rolls off. Banquet now to Johnson. Johnson over to Henry. Back to Banquet on the other wing. Down low to Henry. McGee right there. Kicks to Johnson. Johnson drives. Floater. And it's nice. off the glass and good. Good ball movement by the Braves. 40-38 Blue Jays. Just cannot pull away from this pesky Braves team. McGee picks the ball up. Goes oh. across court. And Johnson knocks it away. Can't run it down, though. 16 on the shot clock. Schnell checking in for the Braves. Keeps that four-guard, one-post group in the game as Scott takes a breather. 
McGee drives, looking for someone to pass to. Now, Ooh. ball's tipped by Johnson off of Beam, and the uh, once again, the pass to the wing is just being taken away, and there's not enough backdoor cuts for the Blue Jays to make them pay for it. Banquet guarded by Veer, drives, cut off by Veer and Bowen. Now Henry has it. She'll drive. Shoots over Bowen, air balls. Might have got a little piece there. Yeah, maybe. McGee's going to go coast to coast, blocked by Banquet. They're going to call body, and it's uh, about all they're going to be able to call because Bankhead did a good job of keeping, of blocking that shot and keeping her body away, but I think there was some contact there at the very end. McGee back at the line as Bankhead picks up her only her second foul. First free throw is good. And the second one's good. Back out to four. Good defense there by McGee. Ball goes out of bounds, but it'll stay with the Braves. Henry will inbounds for the Braves to Rollins. Slip screen by, and a foul called. So slip screen there by Alatini. She drives on Veer and picks up a foul call. That'll be the third on the Blue Jays, third team foul. Three team fouls for both Braves and Blue Jays. Rollins to inbounds. Bowen. Oh, nice. Picks it off. McGee has it. She'll slow it down. Get it across half court. Double screen here, so. Right back to her there. McGee had her choice. Good move by Vera to back off Banquet. Gave her a gave her a little bit of a what we used to call a Wilson burger on that move. Three-pointer by Beam off the mark. Rebound by Banquet, And it's two on two on two as Banquet drives on McCoy. She'll well, back it out. Nice. Good job by Maddie McCoy. Now three-pointer by Alatini. Looks Blue like Jays come away with it. Janisha Hendricks getting ready to check back in. I think that'll be good. Veer has it. See if we can get McCoy a shot. Players all over the place fall oh, down. Missed it. Yeah. And Veer right there for the rebound, and Banquet going to be called over her back. Oh. She's going to pick up her third foul. Fouls on Ottawa's number five. Whoa. Kennedy and we've got a line change for the Blue Jays here. Hendricks, Berlin, Owens, Baker, and Veer stays on the floor. I think there's a question of whether. I think she has three. I think it's three fouls. I don't know why yeah. there's four up there. She had only, well, she only had two the last time she fell, but yeah. maybe they were wrong that time. So maybe it is up to four now. I think they're, I think it's at three. Ottawa bench seems satisfied. Oh, Berlin, almost. Berlin trying to find Owens down low. Tough pass there when you're with with that angle. It's a straight on angle, and that's a tough pass, especially for a, a for a post player to make that entry. Tough pass for uh, with with the angle. Alatini fakes, drives. Owens right there. She'll back up and shoot, and off the mark. Berlin with the rebound. Braves have gone cold a little bit. Blue Jays have not been able to stretch it though. Past this four. Nice post entry pass. 
And a block by Henry from the backside. Twenty-two, plenty of time on that shot clock. Pass to Owens. She'll drive on Alatini. Now loses oh. the ball. Alatini and Owens hit the floor. Henry has it. Cross court to Acosta. Acosta driving on Berlin. She goes up. Can't get it to go. Oh. Banquet right oh, there. Man. And they're going to call. I think she was out of bounds. I think they just called out of bounds. I think she stepped on the, on yeah. the baseline, I think. Well, we'll watch the uh, replay. Oh, man. Uh, she might have bounced the ball out of, on the baseline. I really couldn't tell on the replay, but the ref's right there. Well, she did run into Veer pretty good. She did do that. Banquet will check out of the game. As Schnell comes in, 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court pressure here by... The Braves. Blue Jays break it. Oh. Owens was kind of past the point of no return right there. Yeah. Instead of passing it out, I think just go straight at the bucket and and score. But a little bit of unselfish ball there, trying to get it to Worth. Oh. Now, oh, now Worth and Berlin knock it away from each other. Man. Coach Reed has seen enough of this. He's going to get McCoy back in the game. And this is a full timeout. We'll take it with him. Two minutes left here. Blue Jays on top, 42-38. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service, always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game. All right, we're back here two minutes. We could probably tell you exactly what Coach Reed said because we'd hear it from here. Yeah. So We weren't listening, but it was uh, plenty loud. We probably could have picked up a few pointers. <laughs> Hendricks, Worth, McGee, or Hendricks, Worth, McCoy, Owens, and Baker in the game for the Blue Jays. For the Braves, Johnson, Schnell, Alatini, Acosta, and Henry. And drive in. Henry gets the rebound, and I think Owens will be called for the foul. That'll be her second foul and fourth for the Blue Jays in this quarter. And fortunately, for both, all of us, this quarter's about over. Yes. It's been a very... Well, they've been at 42-38 for, what, four minutes or something? Uh, uh, seems like it. And yeah. uh, it's just been ugly. And uh, nothing personal, but it's just hasn't been one. It just hasn't been pretty. No. One of those quarters spread inbounds for the Braves. They'll run off of that. Alatini for three and just off. Owens with the rebound. Oh. Tries to get it to Hendricks. Johnson just about picked it off for a layup. Now Owens almost had oh, Baker. Had, had Baker streaking. Banquet. Steals the ball, goes in for an easy, uncontested layup. That'll bring them back to within two again. He was double teamed, and there were some open people, but uh, wrong place. Well, yeah, Baker had slashed down the lane and was open, but then didn't open up on the perimeter quick enough. Going to have to be more backdoor cuts because they're overplaying every pass. Oh, good Shot defense. Off. 
at the glass. Good defense by the Braves by not fouling there as Johnson has it. She'll set up. And we got oh, arms. Oh, we got arms swinging down low by Scott and no call by the official looking right at it. Now Baker sticks a hand in and knocks the ball out of bounds. It'll stay with Ottawa with 11 seconds on the shot clock. Bowen will take care of that, huh? Owens will get a break, and Bowen will come in to guard Scott. And we're going to get a foul called, and it'll be McCoy picking up her third foul on the drive, and that's five on the Blue Jays, so that'll be two shots from here on out. Fortunately, there's only 30 seconds left. And we, we might have a tie ball game here. Looks like we're headed that way. And no, Blue Jays yep. still hold on. <laughs> still have not given up that lead. They've had the whole game. Clinging by their fingernail, fingernails to that one point lead. Worth Ooh. has it. Hand off to Hendricks. Almost lost it. Back to Worth. Worth now to Bowen. Bowen spins, goes up, can't get it to fall, and the Braves come away with it as Johnson dribbles quickly up court to Banquette. Banquette banks it off the glass and no good. The Blue Jays hold on to the one-point lead going into the fourth quarter. 42-41. Jim, I don't know what we're going to find out in this fourth quarter, but hopefully it's better than the third. <laughs> I, I think this is where the rubber meets the road, and we'll see. hopefully uh, Blue Jays have some... Some, something good in store for us. All we'll right. be back in a minute. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. All right, we're getting back here. Well, Rod, you had mentioned that uh, this was a rough third quarter. We just double checked the stats. At the five minute mark of that quarter, it was 42 38 which means the last five minutes of that quarter, the Blue Jays scored zero points and Ottawa scored three. So, so I, crazy. Let's see if the teams can clean up the basketball a little bit and have some uh, some more scoring here this last quarter. Johnson, Alatini, Scott. Banquet. And Johnson in the game for the Braves. Foul on Bowen. So right away, Tabor picks up one foul. And they run that same play. They've run that same play over and over. Every time Alatini fakes goes go, and goes around for the drives down for a layup. So you know it's coming. It's like you, she, and she made, you know, there's a tie game. Blue Jays have led the entire game until now. We have a tie game in jeopardy of going down one. And we do yeah. as Alatini makes them both. Ottawa up one, 43-42. Hendricks, McCoy, Bowen, Worth, and Baker in the game for the Blue Jays. Baker drives, goes off the glass, and scores. Oh. I really think that's the key to this, uh, what they're doing, is taking away so many of our passing lanes, you're going to have to drive to the bucket. The guards are going to have to just step up and drive. 
And we have people like Alicia Baker and Maya McGee who can do that. And Baker gets oh, the steal. Nice. Good defense on Acosta. Picks up the steal. And that's where the difference is going to have to come in the defense. Once again, Baker drives on Banquet. Can't get it to fall. And yeah. she's going to be fouled by Alatini. Fortunately for Alicia, she got her own rebound. Yeah. You know, I don't often see Coach Reed up like this, and she, he's up. Tabor barely oh. gets it in bounds before the five-second count. Now Hendricks drives. She goes off the glass yes. and scores. Nice play by Janisha. That's really the key, either slashing to the basket or just driving to the basket. Either way, but the Blue Jays, oh, I don't understand. Oh, I don't gosh. understand why they're, they're letting the post play get so crazy wild and oh uh, not getting any calls down there. Shot is up, no good, and Hendricks fights for the rebound. Right. She's going to be knocked to the floor by Johnson. That was an easy call by the officials. I'm not sure what the coach is complaining about there because there was really nothing to be complaining about from my perspective. No, yeah. I mean, I, I'm trying to be pretty fair and balanced, but yeah. I, I'll call it if I see it. But. Blue Jays with a commanding three-point lead. It's a little four-point <laughs> run. And Baker drives again, goes up, yeah. can't get it to fall, and she's going to get called for the foul, and I believe that's going to be on Banquet. You know, they, I, they've they done that same play like four times in a row. Yeah, and Alicia could take the ball on Banquet. Yeah, we're basically just doing what they were doing to us yeah. on the other end, and so first free throw is good by Baker. Something to keep an eye on, too. That is the third team foul, only less than two minutes in, so could be some free throws here for the Blue Jays tonight. Short, rebound by Scott. Marshall Penny off to Banquet, being guarded by Worth. It's just a clear out. Good help by Hendricks. Now off to Johnson. Now Johnson drives and she scores. Nice, nice take by Johnson. And Johnson waited till there was no help on that side and then drove to the bucket. So it was a good, good recognition by Johnson. Worth. Shoots, ball bounces out, and Baker's going to be called for falling on the back of Johnson's legs, I believe. Foul's on Tabor number one, Alicia That's her first, team second. Henry coming into the game for replacing Scott. I thought they might keep that rotation going where Bowen guards Scott and uh, yeah. Bowen's comes in the game when Henry's in, but so far Bowen stays in. Banquet gets it. Now down to Henry, back to Banquet. She drives, puts her arm out, trying to wave off. Now oh. Baker comes in for the backside steal again. She's going to go all the way, and Johnson steals the ball. Boy. <laughs> Nice play by Johnson. She was out of bounds. But Baker needs a Baker needs a spin move there. Yeah. She'll come in for Baker. Here checks in, gives Baker a break. Baker. Good minutes by Baker. Oh, great minutes. I would have something in my playbook right now. Not right now, but when a, with a Banquet. When Banquet comes back in the game, I'm going right at her for pick oh. up her fifth foul. She did go off of Baker that last few times on defense. Yeah. 
Shot clock at 15, plenty of time. McCoy fakes the three, had Veer. Now finds Owens, Owens spins, goes up and oh, can't get it to fall, but McGee there, new shot clock, or at least 20. Tabor has time now. And they're gonna get a arm bar call against Ottawa. That'll be their fourth team foul this quarter. As Beam checks in for Worth, 6.38 left in this contest, 47-45. I keep thinking Tabor had a four-point lead, and I look up, it's two. Next foul for the Braves sends the Blue Jays to the line. 18 on the shot clock. McCoy on the wing, back to Veer. Over to McGee, top of the key. Now beam to McCoy. McGee for three, and that's off. Out long to Marshall Penny. Now Johnson going to go one-on-one -on -one against McGee, and the foul is called against Maya McGee. You know, it's going to be McCoy. And that's four fouls on her. See if they catch that. How did she get that foul call? I thought that was... Uh, they, they really messed that up. I guess we can go to the replay if we need to, but. When there's too much, uh, when there's yeah, a little bit too much emphasis on the officials right now, which means that's, that's not good. No, it's not, not for anyone. Johnson at the line to shoot two. First free throw off the mark. He has 72% this season. I think this is going to be a long six minutes. <laughs> I think you're right. First free throw is good, or next free throw is good. One point lead again for the Blue Jays. McGee gets it past half court to Veer. Now back to McGee. Tabor will set up their offense. Hand off to Beam. Back to McGee. They have not solved this. Gee. Got to get to Misha. Unbelievable right now. The Blue Jays offense has just been stymied by this defense of the Braves. Yeah, when they get it off on that wing, you're right. They just clamp down, and it just the Blue Jays have not adjusted to that and had some turnovers on that side and not gotten good shots. Alatini now off to Marshall Penny, back to Henry, over to Acosta. And Blue Jays defense is... Right there with the Braves. Just matching defense for defense. Shot clots at six. Acosta goes up, can't get it to fall. Oh, man. They got that shot off just in time for another 20. That was an unfortunate bounce. Good defense by the Blue Jays, but couldn't pick up the offensive board. Now Henry will start the offense up high. She drives, kicks to Alatini, three-pointer, and it's oh. good. And Alatini has sparked them here in this second half with three-point shooting. And that puts the Braves on top by two with just under five to play. Veer is going to drive, go all the way in, and they call a foul on the floor as Veer drives for the bucket. Well, it's free throws anyway, so. It will be free throws and five team fouls against the Braves, but. Oh, they're talking here. Let's see if they talk. To I and they're oh. going to count it. Wow. I didn't get, I need to see the replay came kind of here at the end. I didn't see it all, but we're going to get a technical foul there. Oh, I can't that. believe that. Cross half court. Wow. Here's the replay again. No, this is yeah, that's that's for sure on the play on the on the that is on the drive based on when the whistle was blown. And Veer gets the friendly home roll there off the to take the one point lead again. Banquet checked in the game for the Braves. Marshall Penny has it. She drives, kicks Henry off to Banquet. 
Then Kip drives, goes to Henry, and oh. lo Henry loses the ball out of bounds. Nice defense again by the Blue Jays. They clamped down over here, <clears throat> except for that three-pointer they gave up. Last several possessions, they've really played better defense. Marshall Penny guarding Hendricks. Off to McCoy, oh. now back to Hendricks. Hendricks drives, stops, shoots in the lane, nice. good. And we're back to a three-point lead with <laughs> at the four-minute mark, Jim. Oh, just wind this clock, huh? Oh, no kidding. And um, somehow McCoy picks up a foul there. Focus on Sabres number 22, Matt McCoy. That's and goal. Baker checks in for Beam. Now that'll be a big deal, Maddie. Now with four, she's an important piece. 3:58. Coach oh, Reed's going to keep her on out on the floor. Telling her to be smart. We also have uh, McGee and Worth that could play f defense off the bench. That ball's off the mark. Three-pointer by Johnson. Owens with the rebound. Gets it to McCoy. Three-point lead. McCoy calls, looks at Coach Reed. They're going to call something here. McCoy could post up on Alatini if they wanted to do something like that. It's a mismatch. Owens open down low. Oh. She's going to drive, go up, and over oh. Henry to score. 54-49. That's up to five points now. The biggest lead Tabor's held in quite some time. This since, the, since about the six or seven minute mark in the third quarter, maybe. This could be a big stop here for the Blue Jays. Banquet's going to fire up a three, and that's off. Rebound to Owens. Owens to Hendricks. Big rebound for Owens. No foul there on the screen by oh. McCoy. McCoy taking a chance, and Baker lines up a three, and it's no, off. No, man. Good timeout called, a 30-second timeout for the Braves. Woo. So two three-pointers shot by two good shooters for each team, and neither one grazed the rim hardly, so... Yeah, Bankhead is over 40% on the year. Yeah. So, expected her to hit that wide open. Stay with us. The Blue Jay men will be on uh, right after us. And as we mentioned, um, after tonight, regardless of this outcome, big game on Saturday as the Blue Jays head up to St. Mary's as they are will take on the conference-leading St. Mary's Spires, who will go to 11-0 tonight. They're up by 30 right now, and so... Uh, this is Coach Reed had circled these six games right after the new year. We're on game five of that, where this was just a, a really tough stretch for the six on the road, all the better teams. And so, as of now, they're three and one on that stretch. And if they could squeak this one out and then hopefully win on the road Saturday, getting out of that six game five and one yeah. could be a big deal. But got a lot of work to do here with 250 left. And going up to uh, St. Mary and playing up there in their gym is no easy oh, feat. Oh, no, and they're obviously playing very, very well. Right. So. Except for their game with Ottawa, where Ottawa took them to the wire. I could see why. Yeah. Yeah, now we know why. Banquet drives on Worth. Cut off. Owen steals the ball. Wow, just rips it away. No jump ball. She just ripped it out of there. Blue Jays getting their offense up five. Worth has it, looking for Owens. Couldn't find her. Baker flashes. And we're going to get a block call. That'll be Alatini. No. They're calling that on Owens. Oh. Ay, ay, ay. That's one of those block charges that could have gone either way. Owens might have forced it just a hair. Yeah. So Blue Jays up five. Just a little bit over two minutes. Got to not give up the three-pointer here. We said at the outset, this team can shoot well from the three. Inside, Owens knocks it away from Scott. Good defense by Owens down low. And this has been an interesting matchup all night. Inbounds to Scott, down low, guarded by Owens. 
She goes up, can't get it to oh. fall. Owens, Man. good defense, just went straight up. Grabbed her eighth rebound. Owens at the half court. Knocks oh, down Marshall he, Penny. Yeah, finally got his tee. Coach Bondurant did not like. I mean, she didn't move. Did not like the call, or the no call at half court. Oh. As Owens sets the screen, and none of. She did not. She did not set it maliciously. She was just standing there. She didn't move one bit. And Vera will go to the line to shoot the technical. Oh. We'll you watch it here. See the replay here, and Owens dead still. No, there's nothing there. There wasn't a single oh. Ottawa teammate helping out Marshall Penny running into that screen. Now, I've seen some malicious screens at half court, and that wasn't one. No. We'll see if the 150 left here. See if the Blue Jays take a little bit of time, but a lot of work left here. Veer passes up to three. Running it, running the clock. Ball's kicked out of bounds by Alatini at, with nine seconds on the clock. So the clock is Tabor's friend right now. And they go and up to 20. They're using all of that clock. And they get a little, they get 10 more seconds. Reset on the kick? Yes. Okay, there you go. Owens at the free throw line. Now off to Worth. Oh. Worth was going for Owens. Now Veer's going to drive, and foul's going to be called on somebody. Oh. They got it on. There's going to be a block call on Banquet. Banquet. And that's her fifth. I don't know what happened there. We're going to have to see the replay on what happened. They got Banquet. A, a, they called it a, a block, and I'm trying to figure out when it happened. Really, that's no call. Yeah, th there should be no call there. Yeah. And I think had Banquet not reacted so strongly, there wouldn't have been a call. Yeah. I mean, Olivia didn't move. Right. It can't be on Olivia, but like you said, I, I think the right call there is probably a no call. Yeah. So I think they're trying to decide, is this a, 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 a situation where she shoots free throws, or is it a reset out of bounds? Uh, it's a player control foul, so you wouldn't be shooting. Yeah, and I think the Blue Jays would probably prefer that. It goes back to 20. And they get it ironed out, and they are shooting. Well, well shouldn't, shouldn't Olivia be shooting? That's what I thought. <laughs> That's, well, maybe we didn't, I don't know. Oh. Veer now has uh, all of a sudden struggled at the line. Missed her last three. This has been something the team has struggled with for several weeks. There we get one to go. 55-49. Six-point lead for the Blue Jays heading into the last minute here as Marshall Penny brings it up. Off to Johnson. Baker falls down, and Johnson dribbles out of bounds. That was all our plan the whole time. Yeah. And McCoy will come back into the game for Veer. But we'll definitely see some pressure here with the six-point lead in 101. A one-two-two, three-quarter court. Get it across, please. There we yes. go. Owens has it, top of the key. 15 on the shot clock. 
Clock is their friend, oh. and uh, Costa will pick up the oh. foul. Fouls on the Braves, mm -hmm. number 13, Diane Costa. That's her second. Team is over the limit. Checking in for the Shooting two. And Bondurant, Coach Bondurant still upset with the officials. Free throws good, 56-49. And we get a timeout by Ottawa. He's asking for the ball on the opposite side. And I think we have a 30 second timeout, so we'll, well keep, keep it right here. No, it's a full now, so. Nope, now it's a full, so I we'll, guess we'll, we'll take we'll a break right and you can listen to our sponsors for a minute. Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. All right, here we are, 43.4 seconds. Blue Jays with a seven-point lead. Ottawa has the ball. They advanced it off the timeout. Blue Jays need to just make sure they do not give up any three-point shots here and get some, secure some rebounds. And Alatini's had the hot hand for the Braves. She gives it up to Johnson. Johnson's going to drive, and Baker. I thought Baker was just going to let her go. And then at the last second, I think Baker gave her a little... Brotherly shove, as they say in Philadelphia. Yeah. Well, they don't say it anymore. They're nope. done. Yes. Man. And Baker comes out of the game. McCoy checks back in. First free throw is good. Couple scores in the conference. Kansas Wesleyan. Leading Sterling 72 69, just with five seconds left. So we'll catch that hopefully in score soon. Second one's no good. Alowans with another rebound. And, and we're doing an advance here, 30 seconds. A couple other scores. Avila on top of McPherson 79 48. Um, Bethany leading York 82 75. And. I think there was a Southwestern score. St. Mary's was winning really handily there. Friends is on top of Oklahoma Westland, 63-45. Oh, and then St. Mary's, yes, with the win at Southwestern, 88-45. So we expected that. Yep. Team leading the conference, defeated the team at the very bottom. Well, we definitely uh, have some things to still figure out here with the game of basketball. The women have had some struggles at the, like you mentioned, that third quarter, only a 12 to nine quarter. See if there's gonna be a foul, yep. Blue Jays still have two timeouts. Knowing Coach Reed, those will be used on two advances. Which Rodham loves <laughs> that <laughs> rule. <laughs> uh, I just don't get it. Oh, man. I'll tell you one well, thing. Struggled at the line here in this 
And the Blue Jays have um, last few games also struggled from the line. Tonight, 11 for 20. I think they struggled in the Bethany game, at least yeah. in the first half. Uh, lost them both. And we have a jump ball. Jump ball's going to stay with the Blue Jays. Hendricks will inbounds for the Blue Jays. Into Owens, back to Hendricks. Hendricks will dribble out. And Marshall Penny will pick up the foul as Hendricks was just trying to stay away from any Ottawa Brave to avoid being fouled. That's her second. Janisha Hendricks to the line, shooting two. First one's good. Second one's good. 58-50. And that doesn't really tell the story of this game, no. the, the score, as Hendricks gets a pick at half court. And Marshall Penny for three and a timeout called by Ottawa. 12 and a half seconds to play, 58-53. You noticed after that pick, Coach Reed did not run out to half court. <laughs> but Hendricks got hit pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see, what do we have? We have a just another full timeout. Full timeout, and we can take that with them. We'll step aside for a minute. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Iton Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Iton Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itonagency.com. Well, we're, we're back. The uh, Blue Jays actually called a timeout right after in order to be able to advance the ball. So they should be out there just a couple minutes here, and hopefully we can get through these last 12 and a half seconds, Rod. Well, we can, take, we can uh, use that time to thank our sponsors for advertising the, on these broadcasts and these live streams. Really appreciate all the sponsors that that advertise and uh, make these streams possible. All right, Blue Jays will inbound here. McCoy to inbounds, and we're going to get a foul cold before the ball can get in <laughs> on Marshall Penny. So still 12 and a half seconds left, and Hendricks will go back to the line. See if she can keep that hot free throw shooting going, and she does. She's now up, I think, to 16. 16 points. Olivia yes. Owens in the first half, and Janisha Hendricks on the second half. And that's 17. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And Hendricks picks up the steal. And she's going to dribble it out, and that'll be a, the game. As the Blue Jays come away with a 60 to 53 win over the Ottawa Braves. This will be a team that no one will want to see in the tournament for sure. 
Absolutely. I mean, they're a scrappy, athletic, scrappy, and athletic, and play play really good defense. So that's what you don't want to see. But it's a win for the Blue Jays. Stay tuned for the men's game coming up next as the Ottawa Braves men will take on the Tabor College Blue Jays. Good night, Jim. Marzicek is exceptional at his uh, vertical defending. He kicks that one off at fifth.